Kurt Peterson is here. He has a great event coming up this weekend. We'll find out why he had to put this event on. First of all, Kurt, though, you founded what organization? I'm actually the founder and executive director of an organization in Uganda called Soweto Youth Fellowship, but the organization here is called Change to Change. Okay, so founder and director of this ministry, and we're going to find out a little bit about that. But first of all, I, w- I want to know a little bit about you. You grew up a farm boy here in Manitoba. Where'd you grow up? I grew up in Clandaboy. Clandaboy, and yes. on the farm? On the farm, do you family miss, farm. Do you miss the farm? Yeah, I do. Yeah? Yeah. Not on not during years like this, though. <laughs> no, no, this hasn't been the greatest fall, but, you know, it's always fun getting out there, piling bales and... Uh, Doing whatever you can get your hands on, because there's always something to do. So you're a missionary now, but this young farm boy from Clandaboy, Manitoba, decided they wanted to chase after a movie dream, first of all. Tell us a little bit about that, what you what you did to pursue that. Well, I guess um, when I reached 19, 20 years old, I started having a dream to work in the film business, and I started researching it, and then I realized that uh, Vancouver was the Hollywood North of of Canada, so by the time I was 21, I packed my little car up, I headed out to the West Coast and decided to pursue that dream, and yeah, I got into it quite a bit. I took some training, and I tried to to immerse myself in that world as much as possible. So you spent some a few years out there working on films. What was the biggest film that you had a chance to work on the set of? Do you know? Oh, I don't know. I, mean, <laughs> I, ha- I haven't had major parts in any films, yeah. but I've met so many so many actors like Penelope Cruz and Sir Ben Kingsley and all these different actors that you think you'd never be able to meet in person, I was able to. So that was pretty fun. So what happened to that dream and how did you end up founding and directing a, uh, a ministry in Uganda, Africa? Well, it's, I mean, it's not a really crazy story, but yeah. I just had this desire rise up in me in 2008 to to travel parts of the world, but not to go lay on a beach somewhere. I wanted to actually do something hands-on and make a difference because I had great role models, my parents, you know, farming, you're, you're, you're feeding the world. So I thought, I'm going to not just go on a vacation, I'm going to go somewhere and make a difference. So... I started looking all over the place, and in the end, I was directed to Africa, and then more specifically, Uganda. So you went to Uganda. What was it like as you toured around there? And, and like, Did you travel around the whole country then, or did you find yourself in one area and you kind of stuck there? Well, I volunteered at an orphanage for four weeks, which actually ended up being six weeks, and I just fell in love with the people. I fell in love with the culture. I fell in love with the children. And saw the great need, and I was just, I got bit by the Uganda bug. Uh, And you said a a phrase there, saw the great need. I read a book once by a man named uh, Bill Johnson, has a ministry in Hell's Kitchen in New York City. And in that book, he wrote, so often people wait and wait and wait to hear God's call, but the need is the call. Is that what you found? Like you saw this need, and you just found God calling you to do something about it. Like at that time, I wasn't... I wasn't so deep with the Lord as as I am now, but I definitely felt the calling of the Lord on my life and specifically to that region of the world. What what was the need? What did you see? I mean, there's there's needs of everything. There's there's people that simply don't have enough food to make it through the day or don't have enough uh, money to go to school because they're you have to pay for school fees. You got to pay for every uh, school supplies that you can possibly have. Everything you have to be has to be paid up front, and uh, you know there's no credit, there's no anything. So there's just such a demand. There's needs in your face all the time. So this farm boy from Clandaboy, Manitoba, goes to Uganda, sees these needs, and you decide I'm going to start a ministry. Yeah. <laughs> it's, what's it called? How did it start? And and what do you do? Okay, well, I started it uh, back in 2010. I first started from the ground up with going as as small as I could go with pennies at the time and called it Pennies for Change. Huh. I raised $5,000 in about a year and a half. I went back, and then when I went back during that time, I was I was encountered by many, many young people, and I just felt the need 
that they needed uh, a support group or they needed a fellowship where they could come together as young people and talk about their issues, their struggles. And for some reason, God had chosen me, of all people, to be in this community as as a mentor, as a, as a person to minister into their lives. Um, what was it like starting out? Was it just easy? God just moved mountains and it was a piece of cake or or it was hard and struggle? What was it like? No, it it hasn't been an easy road, but it's a road that I would never ask God to change. I mean, he's really fed me with his love, with his strength. And I'm always just reminded that I can do all things through through Christ who strengthens mm. me and uh, it's it's just been amazing. I mean, dealing with 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 government officials in quite a corrupt country, in a foreign country, and there's been many many challenges. And it, but it's it's just it's it has has given me so much growth and uh, leaning into the Lord more and more all the time. Like you you there's nowhere else you can look to when you don't have your family around. You don't have. Too many people that you know for a very long time that you can fully trust, so you put your full trust in the Lord, and He always makes a way time and time again. That's, I know it's not easy, but it is one of the great things of living life that way, is you get to see God show up Definitely. time after time Definitely. after time, right? Definitely. For me, I get a little comfortable. My paycheck comes twice a month. I right. know where we're going to get groceries from, right? And yeah. I know God provides for us, but you really have to rely on him doing that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really being in the raw, I like to mm. say, because it's you and God, and you have all these people that are now looking at you, you know, asking for school fees, asking for clothes, asking for for just the very basic needs. And of course, you don't want them to look at you as God, but you want to be able to direct them to look at God and have him use someone like me in their lives and speak life into their lives because they come from these backgrounds where they don't have parents, they don't have mentors, they don't have people that really speak life into their Mm. lives. They come from desperate situations, poverty and disease and so many things that, that we don't realize here. And it's just like, okay, God, Use me to the fullest as much as possible to to speak life into these these children's lives, these young people's lives, and you see them transform and grow and and have this love for the Lord. It's just so cool. Um, you mentioned in passing, kind of Philippians four thirteen, and do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Has that been like your top verse to help you through, or is there another verse that's been really important to you throughout this ministry? I I I just. I love the book of Philippians, and it's 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 one of the books that Paul wrote that really, really just helps me to to stand firm on on God. And that verse, I definitely speak multiple times in a day. Yeah, and also that uh, that my God will supply all our need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. That one, I must repeat that one. Most times in a day, I think, especially when I'm in Uganda. Well, sometimes God uses us to help supply those needs, and you have an event coming up this weekend to uh, to raise funds for your ministry. Tell us about it. Okay, well, I I thank God for my parents. Uh, My mom has been heading this thing even before I came back to Canada this year, and they've organized an event called It's Time for a Change to Change Musical, and uh, we're going to have different artists from the local community, and it's going to be held in Selkirk this Sunday at Christ Church on McLean Avenue in Selkirk, and it'll start at 2, and we'll have music, we'll have lunch, we'll have prizes, we'll have all kinds of Uganda crafts and things that our our, our young people have made for sale, and all that will support the mission. Again, the information is up to in the events calendar. If people are interested in checking that out this weekend, uh, your website for your ministry is change to change.ca. The two is the number two, right? Yeah. Change the number two change.ca. That's right. Kurt, thanks so much. All the best. Thank you very much. God bless.